Hi, hello, it's everyone's favorite unkempt snuggle pepper. Back for another critique from the art critique subreddit of Reddit. Uh, this person has specifically requested help with shading and with texture. So let's begin. Um, first, I think I'm going to fix a few things. Uh, overall, the general overall scheme of things, right now when I look at this, I see that you are dependent on lines to define the form rather than using value to define the form. What does that mean? Well, if I take a circle and I draw a circle with a line, I depend on lines to define that this is a circle and it's going to look very two dimensional. If you're drawing similar to what a cartoon or an anime, anime is a type of cartoon, but if you're drawing something similar to a cartoon, that's absolutely fine. However, if you're trying to go for a more realistic style, if you're trying to paint, you don't want to be dependent on lines to define the form. So it's absolutely okay to use lines in a sketch when you're about to paint something. So with the example of the circle, if I wanted to define it with form, I would give it a shadow and I would give it a highlight. And I would start with the, the big overall shape and slowly work down into my details. And in a similar manner, you will want to treat your art. So as you're drawing the dragon, you don't want to draw every individual scale. That's going to be a lot of detail unless you're going for hyper realism, which is way down the road. Overall, you want the shadows within the dragon. But now that I've added value and used value to define the form, even though I can still see a little bit of those lines sticking through, I have now defined a three dimensional object in a two dimensional space, which is the reason we shade and the reason we use different types of pencils to create darker and darker values. So how does this apply to your piece and your composition? The first thing I would say is focus on studying many different things. Right now I can tell you understand anatomy because of how detailed you drew his chest. However, you drew his leg way over here and even if you're going for a forced perspective, which I'm guessing you are based on how the ax is moving, his leg wouldn't go that far. That's almost like doing a split and that would create a lot of unbalance. I would take his leg, I think you meant to foreshorten it. And perhaps move it there. And then his foot would come out more like that. I'm going to use a black. Maybe he's trying not to slide backwards. Uh, that creates a lot of this heel. The way you had the foot gave him balance, but you created the, the problem that if you drew the foot correctly, he would be unbalanced. I, I would say for now, hold back on the cool uh, distorted foreshortening where you're trying to create uh, the axe seeming really close to us by seeming really big. Uh, if that is what you would like to do, I would take the axe and cut it off there and move the actual blade of the axe forward so that we can also see the axe. As you have it now, there's all this space compositionally uh, that is empty and all this space down here which is empty compared to this portion that has all of our action happening. I would even go so far as to crop it down to here unless you want to move our magic friend over to there. But back to your original question of how do we view shading? How do I decide what gets dark and what gets light? If you look at a uh, sphere and were to paint it black, 
it's not going to be totally black. It's going to have shades of gray. Uh, the same happens when you paint something white, which goes to tell us that white, white, the whitest white doesn't exist and black, black, the blackest black doesn't exist. Yes, I know there's paint that you can paint on things to make it the blackest black, but generally in real life, um, that doesn't exist. So I try not to go too, too deep into black and use it very sparingly. And the same with white. So for this piece, what I'm going to go through is, is talk through my process of how I would think about shading these things. Uh, and I'm going to say that our light source is up here. Here's our sun. And it's going top down on them. It's, it's probably about noonish. And so anything that is underneath is going to have shadow and anything that's pointing away from the sun is going to have shadow. Another thing we want to consider is how light or dark something is. For example, our uh, magic friend up here, if she's wearing a white robe or a yellow robe, she's going to have, she's not going to see this really dark, dark anywhere in her robe if she's in black and white. So, let's start with, uh, I want, I want this grass to be darker. So what they're standing on is a bit more gray and you're going to take more time when you do this. I'm, I'm just throwing down some color to make a, a point and show the demonstration. I have your drawing on top, uh, with the layers set, set to multiply. I also went in and made lower the saturation of the layer. So the, the yellow hue cast on the paper, uh, wasn't as noticeable. There, there's our horizon line. I'm not too worried about having painted over the characters a little bit. So we have Mr. Dragon, we have Mr. Warrior, and we have Miss Magic Lady. I'm sure they all have names and a really cool story, but I don't know that right now. Um, so another thing to consider is in your composition, what do you want to stand out? I want his mouth to stand out. Look at these teeth. You did a really good job drawing these teeth. I, I, I think our monster, our beastie, should stand out. Um, which is another reason the foreshortening kind of doesn't work is that in order for him to be a giant beast, he can't be standing behind our main character that's getting progressively smaller as we head towards the beast. I think you saw something very cool and wanted to re create it, but didn't have a full understanding on anatomy or composition, which is absolutely fine. Those are things that uh, we have to learn over time. Now, uh, the, his lower jaw is facing away from the sunlight. It's going to catch less light than the rest of him. His horn is also going to have some shadow and his feet are going to have some shadow as well as underneath him because he is a big beastie. Uh, he is definitely going to cast a big shadow. So now we come over to our hero. Um, and I'm going to make the inside of his jacket darker. Because I think that will help him stand out. I think that will be cool. Alright, the cool thing about digital is I can zoom in. So I'm going to go with this medium dark gray and I'm going to shade his pants and his boots. I'm going to put a little shading on him, on his hair. Right now I'm thinking big and overall, uh, where I want shadows to be, where I want highlights to be, what is facing the sun and what is turned away from the sun. So as his jacket gets closer and lower down, it's facing further and further away from the sun, so it's going to get progressively darker. Okay. 
One thing I used to do when I was painting, at least digitally, would be to put the mid-tone down, the main color that I wanted something, and then paint on top of that. Uh, but the more I paint, the more I put down values where I intend them to be. Because value is relative. Uh, there are plenty of optical illusions. You can find plenty on the, the internet. Uh, about how gray looks like a shadow compared to some grays and then looks like a highlight compared to other grays. And we'll go in with the last bit of highlight. And then, oh yes, Mr. Dragon needs some more shading. I, I, I'm not going to worry about our, our magic friend up here at the moment. Um, it would be very cool if she, uh, her magic had a glow, but that's going to be adding another light source and that, that can get kind of complicated. Another thing I, I feel like we tell beginners a lot, uh, but we don't really explain it. Um... And I, I'm, I'm not saying beginner in any way to be rude. I would say you're probably a beginner going towards intermediate. You definitely like art. Um, you know things in art, but there are a lot of things still left to learn, especially in the basics. Like anatomy, shading, light sources, all that sort of stuff. The, the thing we tend to tell beginners um, or, or young artists, or even intermediate artists, use a reference. We, we say this a lot, use a reference. And perhaps you, you, you thought while going through this, well, there's not a reference because it's in my head. I'll just draw what's in my head. Which is absolutely fine. There are many things that exist in my head that I, I, I paint and enjoy that exist in my head until I let them out. Uh, however, the, the difference is that I have done numerous studies and I have built up a visual library, which is how I'm able to look at his feet and know that's, that's not a way that a person could stand. So, while you are looking for references, know that so, some drawings are just not going to be as fun as other. You may, you may draw a cool pose from a reference and you may not use that pose in one of your drawings. That's perfectly fine. That, that absolutely happens. What I would do if, if I were you and I were creating this piece, uh, I would go through on Pinterest and look up all sorts of different things and make a mood board for it and use multiple things as reference. So one of the things I would recommend looking up is going to be uh, anatomy, how to hold a battle axe, how you wield a battle axe. Uh, generally speaking, axes are pretty heavy uh, imagine when you're chopping wood, the axe you use to chop wood or the sledgehammer, they're pretty hefty and an axe has quite a bit of metal and all of that metal is at the end. So realistically, if we are doing a uh, forced perspective, his hand's going to be at a slightly different angle, but his axe should actually come out way over here since it is so large. It's very hard to wield it by holding it at the bottom. So by looking up people who are holding axes, you can better understand how someone would hold an axe while they're fighting, which is going to give you a more realistic painting. Yeah, I, I don't want you to have to sit through a 30 minute video of me shading his teeth. So 
I'm going to zoom out. We have an overall idea of where our lights and our shadows are going to be. And so I wanted to further illustrate the idea of using value instead of lines in order to define the form. So I'm going to go back to our layer with our line art and I'm going to make a layer on top of it. And uh, you did an excellent job of really capturing his chest. And I think if you were going for an animated or anime look, you've done really well. This reminds me of, of Dragon Ball Z back in the day. You know, you can watch like 10 episodes uh, and they're still fighting the same person. Um, I never got completely into to, to Dragon Ball. Uh, as a kid, I was into Sailor Moon. I watched Digimon. That was a trip. Okay, so I'm starting to use values and I'm kind of thinking of our, our overall shape and what is facing the sun and what is not facing the sun, right? So again, pure white and pure black don't, don't exist. And depending on what uh, shade range his skin is, is also going to depend on, on how uh, we decide to shade it. So where most of your lines are actually where some, some pretty intense shadows go. And then I'm adding a little bit of light here. Uh, this is reflective light. And, it, and, and I'm using a little bit of artistic liberty by, by adding some of it as uh, his coat would reflect some some back to him, um, but not very much. There's not going to be very much reflective light. And by using shading rather than lines, I can still create the the appearance that he's very strong. He has he works out. He has abs. but also that they are, are three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional by drawing them with lines. Uh, our dependency on lines, our, our need to use lines instead of shading, um, can appear in many forms. Even when you are painting, there comes a point where uh, you're using lines within shading. You're just hiding them well. Okay. I think that gets a little too dark, so we'll lighten him up there. So, uh, that, that gives us more of an illusion of his, his muscles. Looks a little weird because I haven't drawn like a whole bunch of muscular guys recently. So, uh, that is how I would approach shading. Now, you did mention texture, and of course we have Mr. Dragon. Um, I assume this is a, a, a dragon, otherwise, man, what has Florida been, been feeding their alligators, huh? So, in hyperrealism, if you wanted it to be exact, which I, I wouldn't go for hyperrealism, you would draw every single scale, and that's going to take forever. Rather than doing that, um, so I would pick this area around, around his teeth. And I would go in with a little bit of highlight and kind of start going in, giving him uh, areas that have scales. And this isn't going to be super noticeable. Don't, don't worry too much about this because you just want to cover certain areas to give the idea, hey, he's a scaly dragon creature. Also, don't forget his tongue. And, and you can even... 
Um, this would be one of the cases if you wanted to make it very uh, slobbery that you could use pure white and give them some, some oozy, droppy bits. Um, make it extra gross. Uh, one more note on texture. So you have the battle axe and generally when you're in uh, working with metal you aren't going to have your, your tones as blended as say with skin or with the dragon. So I would go in, put in your uh, colors and then give you know that nice reflective highlight for all of these in your Pinterest board I would look up lizards and various other animals and how their scales work how they form over the face I would look up battle axes in general so you can add more detail um, I think basically adding to your visual library understanding how more things work is really going to move things up and when you are studying thinking about what is the form is this a sphere? Is this a cylinder? Is this a pyramid? Is this a cube? Uh, can also help with being able to break it down. For example, when I, if I were going to continue working on this and I went into his leg, I'm going to think of it as a cylinder. Uh, although it does need to be foreshortened. Uh, I, would, I would think of it's going to have one area that has highlight and then on each side have a shadow. Oh, I forgot the shadow from his coat. Yeah, so his coat's coming in there. It's moving away, so it has more of a shadow. There we go. Bare naked chest. Yeah. Uh, I think the dragon is cool. I think there's definitely a story behind this. I bet it's, I bet it's interesting. I, I don't know. I just saw the artwork, um, and I hope this was helpful.